once you have processes in place, an issue I've seen is how you organize them so that the team knows where to find them. What have you done to organize processes so that employees can easily find the ones that they need? Great question. And just real quick to follow up on what you said about, we don't have it all figured out. Um, not only did I write a big article about how we lost over a hundred units, uh, not too long ago and why I think that happened. I just wrote about a problem we were having with leasing. We were taking way too long to get units leased. Something wasn't working right with our leasing process and our turnover process. We're taking too long from the from the day we got possession until the day the unit was leased. And so I did kind of a deep dive on what we found wrong and how we address that. Um, but it, it's pretty, um, it feels very vulnerable to share this deep operational data, like literally you know, went X to Y days on market, right? Um, Cause I know there's people in the business who are like, I mean, there's people on this call who have their average vacancy is like seven days. And it's because some of them replied to my email and were like, do you need more help? <laughs> um, but uh, okay. So to answer your question about, you know, how do employees know where, um, man, the sun's coming in and just blowing me out here. Um, <laughs> how do, how do we know like where to go to do the processes? Like, so in an ideal world, and it is possible to get here, um, processes are, are triggering automatically and, you know, lead simple just released autopilot, which is a feature that lets them automatically trigger processes based on certain conditions. So if late rent, you know, exceeds $500 by the fifth of the month, it automatically triggers a delinquency process. And the beautiful thing is, and this isn't, you know, you can do this with other software too. The beautiful thing here is it will automatically assign that process to the person who's in charge of it. And it'll assign the individual tasks on that process to the right people who are supposed to be executing those tasks. So in that scenario, no one needs to know where that process lives because it just kicks off automatically and gets assigned automatically. Now, most processes aren't like that. Most processes do have to, at least for now, still get kicked off automatically. And so it, for us, you know, our core management software, or I mean, our core process and workflow software is lead simple. And there's a finite number of processes kind of in the left-hand column there. You know, there's one that says lease renewal. There's one that says move in. There's one that says move out. So it's very clear where you would go to, to execute those. Um, and again, I want to draw a distinction between those core processes living in your workflow software and then your sort of reference documents or your knowledge base, which for us is Notion. There's lots of other options as well. And those are not operation. There's not operational data in Notion. Notion is kind of a static, I mean, static. I mean, it changes, but it's just like a reference document. Like we have a reference document on what's a good example. What's our company credit card policy, right? That's not a process. That's just something everyone needs to know, like where to send receipts every time they use their company card for an expense. I wouldn't want to run a process with multiple steps that they have to manually check off, you know, every single time they go to, you know, Starbucks on a business meeting or something. Um, so trying to figure out what should be a process and what should just be a reference document is an interesting exercise in and of itself. I think of it as uh, what I, th in kind of database terminology, like there's an object, whether it's, uh, an owner, a resident, a property, a work order, like something tangible um, is moving from one status to another, right? Like that's that's the process or you're through multiple statuses. And that's how Lead Simple, if you probably dug into their software, that, like, that's how it's architected. Um, versus, you know, what Peter was talking about, the, the reference documentation, which is more just explaining, uh, here's, you know, Here's where you click, and maybe importantly, like why this process exists. Um, you know, I think that the why and a lot of the stuff often get skipped over. Um, you know, why this is important, <clears throat> in particular, as you get more specialization, making sure that team members understand where they fit in the overall picture and why you know why this is happening, why you're doing this. I think that 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 starts to matter more and more. Yeah, and it's it's great practice to. Uh, Wolfgang Krosky turned me on to this. He's a, you think I'm good at process. You should see some of his stuff. Um, he turned me on to this idea that at the beginning of every process, somewhere like if there's a place in your workflow software, 
you should write a little bit about what the process is supposed to do. Um, why do we do this? What should the end state be? Just a general overview of how it works in plain English. And it could be like a little loom video or just some bullet points. Um, that's really helpful for someone who, you know, may be new to the industry and has never run a move out process before, but now they're expected to do this. They, they're trying to understand like, oh, okay, like we have to do this, this, and this when someone moves out, it kind of gives them like the 30,000 foot view.